Hello again, and welcome to Vantage Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hi, guys. I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> it's October. It is officially October, October 2nd. It yeah. kind of feels like, I don't know, the entire late summer has been just a, <laughs> a blur well, for me. I, I, I can't tell but you. But it's going to be like, in the, I think, in the 70s tomorrow. I think that's the thing. It's like, we have this, these little cold nights. And then you think, oh, that's it, it's over. And then it goes back into well, the 70s. Well, I think so. we're catching the tail end of the hurricane or something. Yeah, because I, my parents, so my sister and my parents live in Greenville, South Carolina. So, yep. My sister just texted me, and she's like, I'm on day six of no power. Oh. Uh, they had just gotten their, like, meat order, right? So a lot of us, yeah. like, buy in bulk and try yeah. to plan ahead and everything. She did end up getting a generator that they're bouncing between, yeah. like, three yeah. neighbors yeah. to just, just keep, to keep the things, freezers yeah, that makes frozen. Sense. Uh, my parents got theirs back the third day, I believe. Yeah. Lots of trees um, down. Matt and Lisa Swank live in North Carolina. Asheville apparently right. has like just flooded. flooded. Yeah, they live, um, so Asheville's over here and they live up closer to, I guess, Pennsylvania and Virginia maybe, yeah. um, and Sparta. And they, um, Sparta! <laughs> and I messaged Lisa Swank, um, the day of the, the that they were yeah. reporting that like all these roads were closed and I was like I hope you guys are okay and you know blah blah and she was four days she finally she messaged and she said yep I'm I, we got our power back I, I I've showered yeah um, it's you know people think they're prepared for things but well, then when things go wrong especially you realize, oh right. I can't even charge my phone well, or, or there's things and there's funny because there's things that you see on that you see that you laugh at when you see them but they're not crazy thoughts. And I remember, and I've, this is the first time I'll ever, when we moved to Wakefield, I'll, I, first time I've ever not, I think, ever had city water. <laughs> like, this is a first for me, having my own well. And um, I remember somebody telling me years ago that if there's a storm coming, even if it's an ice storm or, you know, anything, you know what you do? You put water in your tub. Yes. Because... You can always drain it. Right. And if nothing else, you can flush your toilet. Like, just yep. like, then I see this one thing on Facebook all the time of people putting ice in their washing machine to put the beer in, right? <laughs> Which sounds funny, but then I'm like, but filling your, if you have an ice, especially like my fridge makes a ton of ice. Right. Why not? Yep. If you're, if you know there's a, a chance that you're going to, um, you know, just, just a little bit of thinking ahead. You know, charge your phone. Right. Or make sure that there's gas in your truck so that you can charge your phone there. Or, you know, just there's some common sense things. Yeah, it didn't help. You see, we, we uh, took uh, my father's car away. So that's like the added thing. Yeah, Not only I can I, I don't have a car to charge my yeah. phone in, Carla. I mean, and there's I'm things, like, Sorry, you know, like, there's those little battery packs that you can, you know, those little extended, th just things that can make... Well, it's interesting. I remember uh, apparently uh, Acapulco got hit again by this hurricane, so I don't even know what's going well, on like there. The, that's the Gulf Coast, I mean. But, but you know, they got hit by a direct mm. hit by a Cat 5 last yep, year yep. or the year before even maybe. And it was so interesting when a lot of the, the free marketeers were talking about the private solutions to these things as opposed to waiting for the Red Cross yeah. Or actually, in the case of this hurricane, we have deployed uh, the National Guard are overseas. They are not available in Louisiana to help. They're not available in South Carolina to help. So uh, maybe you know we maybe should maybe be we keeping should, yeah. our National right. Guard here uh, for our own emergencies. For our own emergencies, that's actually why they, they exist. signed up. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, so it'll be interesting to see. Maybe we could push Defend the Guard yeah, yeah. more. Defend the Guard is legislation that says if you want to send the National Guard overseas, then Congress needs to do its job constitutionally and declare yep. war. And if you don't have the uh, fortitude... fortitude to declare war, you don't get to send right. our friends and neighbors to die. How about that? And Waltz. Waltz. Waltz, VP Waltz, we'll talk about the debate in a hot second. He uh, quit a week before getting deployed yep. to Iraq as a member of the National Guard. So I feel like we now have a champion for that legislation. Because, you know, he didn't what's good go. for the geese is good for the gander. So I know you didn't have a chance to watch the debate. So... Um, it was an hour and a half, so that was pretty long. Um, I try always, 
I mean, obviously, I'm looking for to see how the two different candidates, you know, like who fumbles more than anything else. Um, I will say this: they were both polite. They were both, you know, cur polite. Um, I have to say that J D Vance just performed better than Waltz did. Waltz was. Um, far more uncomfortable in I, this situation. I, I didn't watch the debate, but you know, at 4 a.m. this morning, I was quickly going through my Twitter, and it definitely based on my feed with really nothing to base this on other than that. It did seem that people thought J.D. Vance did a good job. Yeah. Uh, I saw things like uncertain, stuttering, uh, you know, like <laughs> like unconfident words right. used for Waltz's well, performance. Well, and I think, you know, like it would have been like, I was watching like the pregame and they were talking about what like where what's what should each team be doing. And one of the things that somebody, I forget who, um, had said was that um Waltz if if, if you needle him enough, he's going to lose his composure. And JD Vance did not do that, which I think is okay. Um but it, Waltz was still getting um, uncomfortable at different times for a couple good reasons. One, apparently he has a hard time keeping track of what he has and hasn't done in his own life. <laughs> um, Which is usually a telltale sign of someone who's not being honest. I don't know. Not telling so, the truth. You know, like we were talking before the show, I know where I was on 9 11. I would never act inadvertently misspoke, you know, like. And sometimes you might like uh, the hurricanes. Let's go with that. You know, I might be, I went to um, the panhandle after a hurricane. I never would accidentally say I was there for the hurricane. They're not the same thing. So originally there was an inaccuracy about his military service. He at one point said he was um, armed in armed combat which totally turned out to not be true. He's never been in armed combat. And when he was in at- In fact, he quit before yes. he could go but to armed combat. When he was asked- Which does say something about his character. Yes, when he was asked about it in the Kamala inter interview, he said he's got bad grammar. And I thought, I, I, don't, I don't think sentence structure is what the problem was. So that was the first thing. So then- Last night, one of the few times that they kind of pushed against him, um, because there were a lot of issues I think they could have brought up that they didn't, um, but they said he said at some point that he was in Hong Kong during Tiananmen Square. But then it's been fact-checked, and the state of, what's his state, Minnesota? The state of Minnesota said, no, he wasn't traveling during that time. Okay, how do you accidentally say you're in Hong Kong for Tiananmen Square if you weren't. I mean, that's not, to me, these are things that are like, you're, you're, you're not being honest. I'm sorry, you're not being honest. These are like, these aren't slips like I was there on the Thursday and I really was there the following, th you know, like something. These are major events and um, he, when he was asked about it last night, he went on to talk, his answer went back to, well, I was, I'm, I'm from a middle class family and I've done all these things and I'm sitting at home and I'm like, could, could you just answer her question? So she came back with, but why would you, what is your explanation of how you said one thing and then it wasn't true? Well, and he kind of said, I'm a knucklehead. And sometimes my, my, my speaking gets away from me. And I thought, that's called a liar. You don't, you, you, I mean, yes, you might embellish something a little bit. Well, also, so here's the thing, and I don't know if this was an issue where, like, he said it once and everyone's, like, fixating on it to make it, you know, X, Y, and Z and whatever. But, you know, like, sometimes you, you do say something in passing or whatever. But, you know, then the next time, time you clarify. You clarify and that's what you JD pointed out. JD Vance pointed out later in the debate. He did say, when you miss speak or you say something that came was misinterpreted you come clean and own it and correct it I, i've read different things you know i guess waltz traveled with students I, it's all very like hazy to me exactly different His organizations to china are pretty deep am well, i like he, but he, but he, I'm right, I'm mis or, right, i don't know what the connection is like I, he speaks chinese he, he's okay. really fixated on china 
And he said that he had traveled there like 30 times, but then now they're saying, well, it might be 15 times. Okay, those are, there's a difference between 17 and 15. 30 and 15 are big differences. You know, like, so there's, there's something uneasy there. Um, he, he did make, I mean, if you were just watching the facial expressions, I will give J.D. Vance extra bonus points. He was really good with the face. The whole time Waltz was, I mean, first of all, he's a handsome man. And the whole time he was speaking, he literally, I, I don't know what he was looking at, whether it was the time clock, but he would always be looking up and over. And he wasn't grinning, but he was almost grinning. And it was, it was endearing. It was almost like, mm, nope, <laughs> and, but politely. And um, there was, it was good. And I did definitely think, I was trying to think like, okay, so did this change anybody's view? Because there's gonna be a whole what, bunch. What network was it on? Um, I think it was CBS that did it. Okay. And it was broadcast. Were, I mean, we were they it doing um, like the fact checking? Was oh, there, there was no somewhere? fact okay. checking during the show. <laughs> um, because it's really awkward there when was, someone's up there going, there was, I'm a lion knucklehead. There was one point me. where, um, I'm trying to think of what it was. They were talking about um, migrants and people, illegals and something and J.D. Vance says, oh, oh, hold on, let's get something straight. And he was, and they wanted to cut him off and he just kept going because he said, here's the thing, there are different types of people. When you come into this country illegally, you get a, you go through a very short process and you become, um, you given temporary uh, a, a permission to be here even though you're there technically illegally. So when people say, that they have a, they're legally here, that's misinterpreted because those people are legally here, they're waiting for their asylum process, which could take years, as opposed to people with a green card who are here legally. So we're like, the Democrats are intentionally conflating the two, and JD goes, oh, let's be perfectly clear, these are two entirely different groups of people. One is somebody going through the process of becoming a citizen by following all the rules and going through the green card. And then there's these other people. So when they were talking about Trump's plan to deport people, he goes, well, we're going to start with criminals first. Let's start with the people who are breaking the laws beyond coming here illegally. You broke the law, you go away now. You know, and when they, you know, they pressed him on, are you going to separate children from their parents? And he goes, the border policies are actually already separating children from Not their families. Not only that, can I just tell everyone back home, they were doing it under Obama and they were doing it more under him than yeah. what and, happened and, under and Trump. And so like they've constantly, you, so, so first of all, okay, why would someone <laughs> bring up that subject? Because it is emotional. Yes. Everyone who has a family or everyone came oh, uh, from right. somewhere. Right. So and they're everyone, like, oh my God, you take my children, children away, away oh from my, my God. No, and so it has this huge emotional response with people, which makes you susceptible to being manipulated, to be like, yeah, we should totally just let everyone do what they want, right? And so it's it's a manipulative tactic, um, and I mean I don't think they should be separating no, them. But, I, but the reality is it happens under all presidents, right, not just right. under Republican presidents, because right. that's when the Democrats um, tell you it's happening. JD also seemed to be have a much better grasp or much better um, articulation on the issues. Any question they had, anything, he seemed to really have. Good answers, like well, thoughtful I, answers. I don't know if this is fair or if this is actual bias, but I don't think so. I think I'm I'm pretty um, right. Like I try to be objective, even things. though I have my opinion. I still I just am struck that both Kamala and Waltz don't really appear like they seem cardboardy or not like. I don't want to say unintelligent. Well, she doesn't. But, I, she but, just but like, doesn't I have just, any uh, gravitas whatsoever. Well, I just think sometimes like people get places because other people have helped them yeah. or lifted them or you yeah. know they were and right they get, place, end right up in time. this place and you're like, how did you get there? But then when you look at them, I go, well, what is your substance? Like if you no. can't actually stand and talk on your feet about issues that you should know about in order well, to accurately and govern well. Then that makes me kind of so go. Th so that makes that's interesting because I was thinking along the same lines. So here's the thing: people make it. People at home might think, 
well, he's new to this. He's not good at it. But he's not new to this. He served five terms in Congress. That means he ran for federal office at least five Isn't times. He a governor? And he's the governor of Minnesota <laughs> in his second term. So those are seven election cycles. You oh, should. Oh, I don't know how to do anything. I'm double his age and I have double his experience, but gee, I'm a knucklehead. Right. It, you should be able to do this by now. So that makes me go like, how does somebody become a con? I, I'm not disparaging. <laughs> I'm not saying that like Joe on the street can't become a con, like the regular guy next door can't become a congressman. But we all know what's involved in becoming a federally elected person. It's generally not the guy next door. It's somebody with some sort of something. It's usually someone who has a lot of support from California who right. bought a big so, house in Portsmouth but then is renting an apartment in CD2 in order to run in this election as, I don't know, someone who had a wedding in which the photo is next to Hillary Clinton, Blinken, all of it. I am talking about Goodlander, Goodlander yep. and that lady is a deep state <laughs> plant. So, so you look at like, I look at a little bit about him because I really don't know anything about him because, you know, the governor of Minnesota, whatever. Um, and he's a school, he was a school teacher. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But that's an odd jump from school teacher to Congress to governor. Not if you're Not a member of the CCP. Right. So then I'm like, <laughs> unless you're the pick of the peep of this group to be the, we're going to put him through, right? So he plays this whole, like, I'm just a regular guy, you know, I'm just like you. So um, this morning when I was looking, because he digs at the fact that J.D. Vance was a um, venture capitalist. And I was like, why is that a bad thing? I mean, J.D. Vance came, literally is the American dream story. Yeah. You came, your mother, you had an addicted mother, you were raised by a, sing, a grandmother. So you're you, like from the you're Appalachians like, you're, you're, and you grew spent up your on summer, right. or some Mountain you, Dew. Right, whatever. you, you, grew, you <laughs> spent your vacation time with your grandmother in the you know, mountains of Kentucky and you're poor and they had to decide between medicine and turning the heat on and like, and you, you went, you joined the military so you could go to college on the GI Bill and you built and built and built. That is the American dream. So then I looked this morning, and I'm not holding this against anybody, but it struck me odd. So um, Walt has two children. One, he pointed out as the result of in vitro fertilization, so I guess that's a reason to vote for him, uh, uh, whatever. Um, but they sold their home that they raised their children in a couple, when he became governor. And I thought, well, that's odd. Because where do you, where do you go if you aren't governor? Like you sold your home, not you sold your home and you bought a condo because you're gonna live in the governor's mansion and we're gonna have this. Nope, they sold their home. So they, they own, he owns no real estate at this point, has no 401k, no investments, no stocks, no bonds. He has a whole life insurance policy, a state pension and a teacher's pension. And his governor's salary. Interesting. And this, isn't that just unusual? Well, it does sound like, you know, the, the track record for those Congress critters when they go up there is that Somebody's going to pay my way. Magically. I mean, I saw a, a little punch list the other day that showed how much these people's net oh. worths go up. Yep. And guys, I mean, it is crazy. It is, it is, so don't knock J.D. Vance for doing so it before he got there. Clearly corrupt yeah. insider trading. I mean, it couldn't be more obvious because the numbers don't lie. Right. You can just follow the data. And it's like, how did you go from making $100,000 a year to making $40 million right. by the time you get out of Congress? So I'm it, talking Pelosi, the yeah. Clintons, all of them. The Obamas. I mean, yeah. they're like these people. So I'm like, I don't know. That just struck me peculiar. Actually, though. and the Bushes. Yeah. And I mean, it yeah. is... Everyone is doing yep. it. Here's so, the reality. Both sides are corrupt. Yep. We all know that. So I thought that's, that struck me odd in the sense that I just was like, this is an odd person to be holding these offices. Like, uh, yeah, the whole you know, thing is just And we're a talking about strange. when they sold their house, they sold it for $304,000. We're not talking like they sold their million dollar mansion. And I thought, but you don't have much in savings. So your money, what? how are you going? So if you don't win re-election... If, if you don't become vice president, where do you and your wife go? I, mean, I, I just found it, <laughs> to me, that just didn't make, that didn't give me the warm and fuzzies. That, that made me kind of question, like, hmm, if you're not, I guess you have a teacher's pension, so you're dependent on 
Yeah, just something uh, not right. You know, so anyways, I thought right. the debate, I do think J.D. Vance, um, and so back to like, who would this have, whose minds may have this changed? Now they're talking about their seven swing states, and those are probably the target voters, the people in the middle in those seven swing states. They don't count New Hampshire as swing, mm -mm. right? No. So but what? Because they think because it's they a think it'll go in Democrat, yeah. yeah, for congressional, but then on a state level, everything's right. Republican. Right. So, so okay, who's, uh, are, do they just cheat on federal? Is that know. like that doesn't even make sense right? to me, right? So and then I got th when I'm watching, I think about like. Who, which, which slice of our society is really frustrated right now? Beside, you know, like, and just fun. All I, of them. Well, no, but I do think it's people like in the younger. Not, I'm not talking 18 year old young. I'm talking the kids that are already out of college. The, the, the 24 to 40 year olds. Let's go with that. They're frustrated. They want to start families. They don't feel like they can. They're working extra jobs. They can't buy a house. Eggs are still four dollars a dozen. Food grocery prices are up forty percent. Like all of this stuff, and they're they're the ones getting squeezed constantly. And I, uh, that's a slice of America that, when it comes to elections, literally the cost of groceries is going to impact people's votes because if you don't have a strong reason to vote for Kamala. If you don't have a, if you're not like all the way in Democrat, going to vote for, I'd vote for, you know, the devil himself, you're going to think, do I want to continue down the road we're going on where I can't afford to buy food and I can't afford to eat out and I can't afford my house and everything's out of control and I don't know how I see this ending ever? Or are they gonna? Or are they gonna be tempted to say, you know what? I'm. I'm just gonna try the other option. I'm gonna try the other option, and the other option is Trump. And there's a, you know, there's a level there that some people get by. Well, when but I, it's Trump, but it is also RFK yes. and trying to make that, America that, healthy that's again. That's what it I'm saying. Also... I think when you see RFK and Tulsi and listening to JD Vance, who would be the youngest uh, vice president since Nixon. Um, and he's so articulate, and he's you, you, wow. Just thinking that Nixon was, comparing looks, right? Looks, like right, smoker he, to right. maybe it's forty. Somebody, it looks you know. a lot different than it did back then. <laughs> wow. I, I think I think that that will I think influence some younger people because do the younger people want to get behind the team that prop doesn't seem to be fixing it? Who their backup I'm guy is a sixty-year-old white man, or do they want to go with the young guy? And I, I think some voters will go with the young guy. I mean, I hope so. I think that the sad part is I don't think people are making uh, very rational decisions. No. I think there's just an insane amount of propaganda yeah. out there, like the ads that are running and stuff. I mean, it, and it's just everywhere. And it's easy. The one that drives me nuts ads. is when they keep saying Project 2025. I don't even know what the name of it is. So, so can it's we, totally not true. But can we talk about that a little bit? So in uh, on a local level, it came up, I think it was an NH Journal article I saw, but I might be wrong on that. And basically, the headline was something like, uh, we asked uh, Goodlander and Pappas or whoever, we asked two Democrats, uh, you know, every time they talk about their, their opponents, their Republican opponents, they bring up Project 2025. But then this journalist, to their credit, actually went and like looked through what is uh, well looked through the candidates that were being accused of and they fostering don't have this, any... and they have no no, right. no 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 link to it. But then the headline was kind of like, no, it didn't say, "Hey, these two Democrats are lying. They Just have no repeating. source material. Right. This is actual misinformation. Stop saying yep. it." No, none of that, right? It's like these the the way information is presented and parsed out is so partisan now yep. that like you you basically <laughs> you almost have you're either in a silo and you're just being fed the nonsense yep. you're being fed or I don't know who's making an informed decision I guess is my point. I don't think a lot of people are. I mean, let's talk about this. Assange just did a speech yesterday in front of the PACE in France, right? And where he basically said, look, I pled guilty to journalism. I pled guilty to journalism, meaning I was I reporting from, on uh, sources 
and telling the truth. And for that, you guys locked me in yeah. solitary pretty much for 13 years, yeah. and eventually I took a plea, right? But that's the point. Like, the media can't even or do its job nope. anymore. Nope. Um, and we are going down a very dark path. Well, that was one of the of things the, when they were talking, there was a question last about night about, de right? about democracy, right? They brought democracy. And I forget what Walt said, you know, that Trump, January 6th and all that stuff. And he was like, but wait, on the 20th of January, there was peaceful transfer of power. Like, I don't know why you, where this comes from that you say he didn't, he, he did. But then, he, and J.D. said, he goes, what I think the biggest threat to democracy is the censorship that we're starting to experience. When we start censoring what people can know and what people can't know and supporting, um, you know, not allowing people or, or, expo or continuing misinformation, that is... What, what's going to break our democracy? Well, well, not only that, but, you know, I, I've said it before on the show, but, you know, the Hunter Biden laptop story was the first time I personally got censored and I got suspended yeah. off, uh, I think, uh, some episodes were taken down off YouTube. I yeah. got suspended for 30 days off Facebook. I probably got some bans on X2. Um, and everything I shared about that was, was verifiable and true. The photos, the stories, yep. the whole thing, right? And that statement that came out with the how many ever, 51, right? So they say more than 50 uh, intelligence agents say this could be Russian misinformation. So more than 50 was 51. Yep. So that's a way you get... You're, you're tweaking to you're get... You're being yep. misled. And not one word of those 51 agents was true. So what they do is they seed the propaganda, it's called the big lie, and then two, three, four, how far, five years later, it's like, oh, well, the truth came out. Yeah, we didn't. So it is extremely dangerous, and everyone, whether you don't like someone's speech or not, should support free speech. Um, it's the, the American on way. On the free speech thing. We um, don't have it, time. We have one minute, I think. We um, keep an eye on, I think it is, good Lord, the Bow School District. Um, parents are suing because they were told they were banned from going to football games because they were wearing pink wristbands that had a double X on it in support of girls' Ooh, sports. Oh, I think they're going to lose that lawsuit. Yeah, the, not the parents, the no, school. the school's going to um, lose. Yeah. That is the, a perfect example of where free speech is being impinged um, by the government because the school is part of the government. Um, anyways. That's all we have time for this week. Um, next week, we are five weeks, five weeks, folks, to Election Day. Um, get out there, get informed. If you have any questions, email us at uh, manstalk at gmail.com. And otherwise, we will be back next Tuesday, and we'll have more fun things to talk about. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.